Hello everyone and welcome back to On The Spot STEM. Today we'll be doing our DB Table Part 2 series and this will be 2018 Amy 1, number 14. So in Part 1 I explained what a DB Table was, but it's basically an efficient way to use our recursion in combinatorics problems to easily solve a problem. And this doesn't just work for easy problems, it works for very high-end problems also. And so um, we'll demonstrate this by 2018 Amy 1, number 14. So the problem reads, let S, P1, P2, P3, E, P4, P5 be a heptagon. A frog starts jumping at vertex S. From any vertex of the heptagon except E, the frog may jump to either of the adjacent vertices. When it reaches vertex E, the frog stops and stays there. Find the number of distinct sequences of jumps, of no more than 12 jumps that end at E. So the first thing we see is that if we try to casework this problem, then it's going to be very difficult because um, because it stops at E first of all, and second of all, it can jump in either direction at each vertice. So trying to use casework or another sort of casework -y method would be very bad in this problem. However, we see that the restriction is very nice for us because the frog can only jump to either of the two adjacent vertices from each vertex. So that means from S, it can only jump to P1 or P5. And from P1, it can only jump to S or P2. And so our frog is restricted in that movement. And this kind of restriction motivates us to create a recursion-based algorithm because that would help us to find um, E of 12 or the number of uh, sequences of jumps of more, no more than 12 jumps that end at E because we can just use recursion at each step to easily compute it. So let's see what let's see what this would look like. So first, let's just create our recursions. So let's suppose that we were at S, that we want to get to S, and the only two ways we can get there are from P1 and P5. So at the n plus 1 step, we have S of n plus 1 is equal to P1 of n plus P5 of n. And we have that P1 of n plus 1 is equal to S of n plus P2 of n. P2 of n plus 1 is equal to P1 of n plus P3 of n. And P3 of n plus 1 is equal to P2 of n. And normally we would write plus E of n, but the problem statement says that when it reaches vertex E, the frog stops and stays there. So that means if it ever goes to E, it's not going to move anymore again. So it would just be a zero in that case, since it's not going to move back to P3 from E. And for P4 of n plus 1, we have that it's equal to, we would normally say E of n, but it stops at E, so it's not going to move after that. So that would just be 0, plus P5 of n. And P5 of n plus 1 is equal to P4 of n plus S of n. So now that we've got our recursion mapped out, we can just put this into an organized table and efficiently compute the answer that we want. And first, let's think about what the answer is. Normally, we would be inclined to say E of 12, but that's not true because the frog stops when it reaches vertex E. And the problem says distinct jumps of no more than 12 jumps. So this no more than means it could be less than 12 jumps that we have to count. It wouldn't just be 12 jumps. So we would essentially have to count E of 0 plus E of 1 all the way up to E of 12, since we want everything less than or equal to 12 jumps. So with all this mapped out, let's go over and fill out our table. So over here, I pasted our recursion, and now all we have to do is fill it out. So I, in the columns, I made the columns as S, P1, P2, P3, E, P4, P5, 
because these are the vertices of the heptagon. And we can't, we have to keep track of every single one since they're all recursively based on each other. And in the rows, I put zero through 11. And I didn't put 12 yet because we don't have to compute the 12th row for everything. We just have to compute the 12th row for E and add that up with all the other rows. So um, that we, we can just add P3 of 11 and P4 of 11 to get S of 12. So let's begin filling this out. Since the frog starts at zero, at the zero step, there's only one way it can be at S because it starts at S. And there's no ways it can be at any of the other places. So all of them would be zero and S would be one. And now after one step, we have that S of n plus one is equal to P one of n plus P five of n. Both of these are zero, so S is zero, S of one. And P one of n plus one is equal to S of n plus P two of n. So that's equal to S plus P two. So that's one. And basically we see that each kind of value, the n plus one row value of that is basically equal to the two adjacent, where for S we would have to consider P1 and P5 since they would wrap around in a loop. And for P5, we just consider P4 and S. So this kind of systematic way of counting can help us fill our table faster. So we have P2 of one is equal to zero. P3 of one is equal to P2 plus E, so that's zero. And then we have zero plus zero, zero. We have zero plus zero, zero. And we have zero plus one, one for P of five. And now for the second one, we continue again. So S of two is equal to P one of one plus P five of one. So that's just two. And then P of one of two is equal to zero. P two of two is equal to one. P three of two is equal to zero. P four, E, four, uh, e of two is equal to zero. P four of two is equal to one. And P five of two is equal to zero. So now we're in our fourth row and we, we start filling out. And now we see, as we defined earlier, we can't just take P3 of four is equal to E of three plus P2 of three, because we, uh, we defined earlier that we cannot take the values of E into the next one because the frog stops at E. So that means P3 of four is just equal to P2 of three, which is zero. And then as normal, E of four is equal to P3 of three plus P4 of three, which is one. And then for P4, since the frog stops at E, we can only consider P of five. So P4 of four is equal to three. And P5 of three is equal to uh, P0 of three plus P4 of three, which is equal to zero. So I filled out the rest of the table and I added a 12th row for E of 12. And that's just equal to P3 of 11 plus P4 of five. So now what we want to find is we don't just want to find E of 12. As we said earlier, we want to find E of zero plus E of one plus E of two, all the way up to E of 12, because it asks for the number of ways the frog can go to E in no more than 12 moves. So we have to consider everything less than 12 also. So adding these values up, we have one plus one plus three plus five plus nine plus 15 plus 28 plus 49 plus 90 plus 160. So this is two, five, 10, 19, 34, uh, 62, 111, 201, and 201 plus 160 is 361. So that means the sum of E from zero to 12 is equal to 361. And I'm just gonna put that over here. It's equal to 361. And so this is what the problem asks us to find. So we can just fill in 361 and we can move on getting the answer correct. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and tell your friends about this.